Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Kazub, I'm Vice Chair of the Toronto Audio Engineering Society and I'm here at Expo 2019 with Chris O'Reilly from Yamaha Corporation. Chris, welcome to, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So Yamaha, obviously huge multinational mega corporation, makes absolutely everything from scratch in huge quantities. Absolutely everything from scratch. That's a good way of putting it, in very, very large quantities, yes. Well, you know, like uh, I know their drum hardware and their motorcycle hardware are built in the kind of same factories, yep. and uh, there, there's a lot of cross-pollination and efficiencies that Yamaha is uh, obviously known for. Yeah, absolutely. There's also, I mean, uh, through some of the company acquisitions Yamaha's made over the last number of years, uh, one being Nexo loudspeakers, um, another one being Steinberg Hardware and Software. Yep. Um, the great thing is they kind of leave them to do their thing as a company, but it, it opens up a lot of uh, collaboration. So with Steinberg, especially, Yamaha started building a lot of their hardware for them, which was uh, which was a plus for them. But you know they also help us with a lot of the software stuff. Right. And with the Nexo design, it was great because we've done a lot of collaboration with speaker design, and then we've helped them out with their amplifier design as well. Ah, so there's been, been a lot of back and forth. So it's a win-win cool. situation for those who, who very win-win situation. With yeah. Very. So with Yamaha. Uh, entering the pro audio industry with Steinberg and something like that, they're 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 a very vertically integrated company. Yes. You, you know, they have everything from the the sound source of the guitar all the way up to the speaker and everything in between. Yep. Uh, you can make everything in a recording studio a Yamaha product, and that's a very interesting. That's a very unique situation for a manufacturer to to be in. It's a unique situation in a lot of cases, not just for the recording studio, but also in other areas. I mean, house of worship is a big one because you know we can go into, uh, you know, churches, institutions, schools, any any other uh, big event like that, auditoriums, and be a full service solution from the grand piano for their concert hall to their sound reinforcement system to their recording yeah. technology in the back and everything in between, backline amplifiers. Um, and and that's one of the things I think some of your vendors and uh, you know uh, supporters like about the the company mm -hmm. is that they, they they do have those types of solutions from from top to bottom. Yeah, for when, sure. When Yamaha, Can so you're with Yamaha Canada. Yeah, I, I represent Yamaha Canada. Yep. So so Yamaha Canada, what type of uh, sales and service does does the, that network support offer to the to its users? Well, it, it actually uh, it offers a lot. I mean, we're um, we're actually Yamaha Canada is celebrating its uh, 50th anniversary this year. Oh. Um, we're actually a co-sponsor of the Toronto Jazz Festival. Our 50th anniversary party is uh, Tuesday night with the Big Tower Power Concert, which will be great. There you go. Um, but we offer a lot of uh, sales and support. We actually have two warehouses, one in Toronto uh, and also a, a warehouse in Vancouver. So okay. we can actually service all parts of the country very efficiently. Uh, our Toronto office is also where our head office in Canada is. There's about 93 people that work out of the building. Uh, so basically it's all of our um, order processing, accounts payable, um, Human resources, all of our product team, all of our sales team, all of our marketing team, uh, our service team, our support team, everybody else. Um, we like to be a one-stop shop. We can, you know, we work with vendors. We have a number of accounts across Canada, both in MI, in Pro Audio, uh, commercial. Uh, we also do a lot of AV business as well. Totally. Um, and yeah. One of the things I've noticed about Yamaha and uh, their their involvement with Audinate is that they really work on community dissemination of information about uh, networked audio over IP. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of changes have happened to the audio industry because of disruptive technologies like audio over IP? Well, you know, I mean, Dante in general with Audinate, um, speaking personally, uh, you know, as an audio engineer, the thing that I liked about it was the fact that it wasn't it wasn't a proprietary system. Uh, Audinate actually, for the first time, you know, took some of the early adopters of audio over IP, so the Cobernet, the, uh, you know, some of those type of things, and made them less proprietary and more open to everybody. So the fact of the matter is, is they're actually getting a lot of adoption out of it, which is great. Um, it's created a system that's seamless, easy to use, and so many manufacturers have jumped on board that you can you can piece together a system that you want and still be able to work within the audio over IP and Dante network. Mm -hmm. And with the recent announcement at Infocom of actually adding video to that protocol as well. Yeah, they're uh, going to drop the D, the DDA, Digital Audio Network. Yeah. T-E, I can't remember what it's, the T. Yeah, there's, it's, I, I, I forget. I should know it off by it heart. It should be Vante. Though. Yes, but it's, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of collaboration coming in the future and I think there's a lot of growth potential there. Um, I think it's the first time I've actually seen 
in my years in the industry where the audio community has actually embraced a single protocol rather than kind of being divided over which is the better one, mm -hmm, proprietary mm -hmm. or otherwise. So. Uh, that's very interesting. Well, I, I, I have a different opinion on the subject, but I'm yeah. not going to get into that. Because <laughs> the, uh, the thing that interests me is interoperability. Yep. And uh, it's a matter of uh, having devices that you can plug in and, and uh, make it go. Yep. That's, that's a very important thing to uh, anybody who's setting up a sound system. And I think that's really what uh, mm. those types of customers are after. Yep. Has the broadcast industry made any requests that are different than the MI industry? Uh, haven't seen a whole lot from the broadcast industry, at least in, in my neck of the woods, on uh, on any of the differences with that. I mean, the biggest one for the broadcast industry has been more the video inclusion, because up until very recently it wasn't; it was strictly audio. So there okay. was still a separate, uh, still a separate network with regards to the video. But I think uh, as things start to get tighter and there's more collaboration, it's it's nice to see a company like Audinate that actually listens to the requests from the public and the consumers and the people who are using it every day. Well, it's a big so, thing. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a big thing, and they're a public company, so yep. so it's it's a very interesting to see how they, they take that technology in those directions that they mm -hmm. go. So, so what, is it, what is it the importance of being at an AES Toronto event for Yamaha and, and what does uh, the involvement of the community bring to, to a company like Yamaha? Well, for Yamaha, I think one of our major mandates, especially in Canada, I mean, it's a big country, uh, it's a lot of surface area, but we are a very brand-focused company where uh, we want to be everywhere. We want to be, you know, in people's minds. We want to be uh, a part of all the events. I mean, it's all about awareness and it's all about letting people know that, you know, we're, yeah, we're here to help. Um, not just for us, but for everybody. You know, we want to help grow the industry together, mm -hmm. the audio industry regardless. I mean, if people buy Yamaha, that's fantastic. Um, we're just we're trying to get a little bit more of exposure because for you know for a country like Canada it is big um, with the AES it's you know it's something that's always been close to me kind of growing up in recording studios and doing a lot of that work um, and I think it's just it's important to kind of get out there and support the community of audio engineers because it's a growing community it's a very it's a tight knit group and it's uh, I think it's just it's really important to be aware of everybody and that's kind of help good. each other out. No, the, the, I think that's that's super important, especially for like Yamaha. Like it's, it's hard to deny the scale of Yamaha, <laughs> and and it's uh, it's very awesome to see you know participation in events like this and and, and being a part of the community. I, mm -hmm. I feel that it's, that's that's super important. Yeah, and I mean that's part that's part of it. I mean for me personally, it's you know I'm I'm trying a lot of different things over the last couple of years. I want to get involved in a few more events. You know we've done some contests for school music programs uh, on the PA side of things. Right. We've worked with some Battle of the Bands with some of the recording schools. Um, you know, trying to get into doing some more audio over IP seminars and, and training sessions for the public and for uh, integrators, contractors, uh, you know, retail store employees, just, you know, trying to help spread the knowledge and just, you know, make the community larger and grow yeah. it, you know. Grow so it what's going inside. on with Steinberg? What's, what's up with Steinberg? Well, Steinberg is, it's actually, it's a big time for Steinberg. Uh, Cubase Software just celebrated its 30th anniversary, which oh, is yeah. mind-blowing to believe. Yeah, mind-blowing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't believe it's it's been around for 30 years. Uh, version 10 is out now, and um, the really interesting news for Steinberg was on the hardware front. Uh, in January of this year, they just released the first commercially available audio interface over Thunderbolt that will do 32-bit integer recording at a 384 kilohertz sample rate. Okay, and that's Thunderbolt. Yeah, it is in Thunderbolt. Um, was originally Mac only, but they just launched Windows support for it about a week ago. That's so it's, it's now cross-platform. So, so what's the appeal of Thunderbolt while all of the uh, pro audio industry goes with a network protocol? Um, I think with uh, this was their first sort of foray into the higher end um, sound card market, and oh, when they when they started developing this product, I mean, as you can imagine, development takes three, Huge. four years a lot oh, of the yes, time. Massive. They've been working on this for a very long time, and that was sort of the protocol they were leaning towards. Um, the good news with this one, though, is that it's not necessarily going to have to be a fixed Thunderbolt interface. The Thunderbolt port on the back is actually an interface card. Okay, um, nothing's available yet, but. I look at something like that and I think that leads to some future expansion of, well, maybe they decide to do a Dante card, maybe they do an AES 67 card, maybe yeah. they do a Matty card. They have all kinds of options yeah. at that point. They're not married to just one protocol for transmission. Well, and it's interesting, the higher bitrate sample rates, you know, like I look at Dante and I don't think it can uh, support anything above 96K. And, and one of the things about the Thunderbolt is it 
can be just a raw data bus that is, you know, straight to the PCI, you know, right to the CPU. So yep. that's a very interesting thing about that. Yep. Uh, and also, uh, the latency can be completely controlled yes. in that type of environment. And almost non-existent, really, yeah. when you think about it. It's, yeah. You know, um, yeah, because of the super high sample rates. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, really, it's just your, it's the you're 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 basically limited to the latency on your slowest piece, which in any Dante network, I mean, it's still you can have a major system with still less than one millisecond of overall mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. latency, which yeah. is fantastic. Well, it's it's very interesting to 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 see those specs and how they measure those specs and how they actually present those specs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a uh, it's a huge topic of conversation in the AES and the standards committees of of uh, you know what those figures actually mean and how yeah. they can actually be interpreted. So it's it's very 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 interesting. I find that super very interesting. Yeah, I've been been reading a lot about it. For me, it's more I like the real world application stuff of it and seeing it in action. We've uh, we've sponsored a couple of. Um, programs, uh, one at a Bible college in BC, where they um, every person that goes through to become a pastor has to do a live sound course. Okay. So we actually, um, we loaned them a, a few TF consoles and some of the stage boxes so that they could actually practice live mixing. Oh, very and cool. it, would, it would be great because the instructor had the whole thing Dante networked and one laptop, multicast streams out and had five different groups being able to work mixing on mixing simultane yeah. simultaneously, yeah. mixing the same thing, and being able to go over and listen to each one individually, and yeah. them having their own control. So, I mean, in the education market alone, I think the possibilities are endless with what Dante's very much so. Well, and the certifications that come with these things, like mm -hmm. I see people on LinkedIn posting their Dante level two and stuff yeah. like that. Like it's I know, and Audnate has made it so accessible to people, just with I mean, their online training and then all of the events that they co-sponsor at all the major trade shows. And yeah. I mean, we were at Infocom last week, um, taking a look around, and there was a number of Dante seminars listed for certification training while we yeah. were there. So it's just, it's, it's nice they're, they're doing such a big um, public outreach on the whole thing to make people a little more um, hip to it. I think it's, it's still, you know, with the high-end audio circles, people are starting to adopt it a little bit. Uh, I think it still has a little bit of a ways to go just for overall public awareness of what it can do. And I mean, right. I've spent some time today on the floor actually talking about it with some people and just, well, well, audio over IP, you know, can you give me a little bit more about that and just yeah. what it really means and how it works? And people are dabbing, dabbling yeah, into but, it a little bit. But they're asking more questions now, yeah. which maybe last year they wouldn't have, which yeah. to me I think is a very good thing. Do you find that there is some of some marketeering going on between these proprietary protocols, your Milans versus your AVBs? Ver well, not AVB, it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, it's just a newer release. A newer release. But, yeah. it's a, but do you find that uh, there's smearing that happens between these types of protocols? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm finding it's... I haven't seen so much of it, at least not from a, a customer perspective, that you know people that have come to us, that they're asking very intelligent questions yeah. these days. I think the marketing platforms on both have been done very, very well. Uh, I mean, my background is I did, I mean, I came from a retailer uh, before I worked with Yamaha. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I worked for a major Canadian retailer and I mean, I've, I sold everything. So I've sold all the AVB stuff. I've sold the Dante stuff. I've right. done it all. And I mean, I can see the, I can see the benefits and, you know, the cost associations and the, and the pros and cons with both. Um, so I just, I think it's, you know, competition is always good. Yep. Um, because it, it, it keeps people honest and it keeps the technologies evolving to the point where they're going to become the best that they can be. Very and good. I think that's good for the industry. The, the, the new consoles that are coming out from Yamaha, you've got your uh, Ravage. Uh, yep. like, like is, you, you know, you, the, the, are, are people starting to put these on their riders? Are we starting to see rental companies pick up these big, huge, monolithic consoles? It's uh, in the U.S. for sure. Um, I mean, we see a lot of uh, sort of PM7 and PM10 um, starting to really gain some traction. It's been a little bit slower in Canada, but it, there's, um, they are starting to get some more traction here as well. Um, you know, they're not, the, they're not the least expensive boards out there by any no, stretch no, of the no. imagination. No. But I mean, when you're talking about uh, large format, multi-operator, uh, you know, redundant networks and things like that there's a lot of there's a lot of horsepower under the hood, um, and it's it's really exciting to see where the where the console business is going. I've seen Yamaha get more into like their unified uh, their unified speaker systems for uh, conferencing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Again, with the complete vertical integration of every marketplace, uh, does the pro audio department support that type of thing, or are we starting to see those types of things, uh, you know, be part of the immersive sound experience or? 
It's, it, to me, I see it kind of as a crossover. So with, with the way that the commercial install uh, and the, you know, the unified audio stuff works in Canada, it's actually done uh, through a separate distribution company that handles a lot of AV install and stuff like okay. that, uh, which is really great because that's, that's their world. They talk really well into it. But we're starting to see some huge adoption and then people wanting to actually uh, bring in some other products. So the great thing about something like even a TF console, which is sort of our entry-level digital, um, is still fully supported by our Provision Air software, which is also the same software that you use to control any of the um, the other commercial right. install or the amplifiers. And the API the is available to customers, so available. if you want to integrate something like a Crestron Absolutely. or something, you yeah. can do and that type of thing. It, it does work with a lot of other manufacturers' protocols as well, and they've done that on purpose because, well, you know, it, it's nice to be able to be integrated and, you know, we'd like to have the whole thing, obviously, as everybody would, but you mm -hmm. know what, if we get one little piece of it, great, we play nice with others, and that's... Yeah. Uh, it's part of the global. Well, and, and having control, and like Yamaha has always been one to uh, open, openly give away their uh, MIDI, implement, or MIDI implementation charts and give away their mm -hmm. programmability. Uh, why is that such an important thing when we're in such a hugely software-driven world? You know what? I think it's just it's the way that the company was started. It's you know the mission statements and the morals of uh, you know the Yamaha family from you know the 1800s hasn't changed that much in the you know 100. 20 plus years of the company, um, you know, it's still very traditional in its values, um, and it's it's always going to be that way. I haven't seen a lot of change with that. I mean, yeah, the way that some of the marketing is done, or the the way some of the organizations is, is have been done in some of the subsidiaries might have changed a little bit, but the core values are still the same, and it's all about being customer centric and yeah. making the customer from, come first. Well, and that's 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 always something I've heard about. You know, like a, every Steinberg user I know is like a diehard Steinberg user. Like, Believe me, I talk to many of them on a daily basis. Yeah, you, yeah, and it's like it's it's more about the story of their Steinberg experience than it is about the technology. Well, you know, it was really interesting at the NAMM show in January this year, Steinberg hosted a, a little private event um, just sort of at the end of the day in their, in their booth. And all it was was Steinberg users from around the globe that basically getting together and swapping stories. Yes. Just talking about, you know, what they're using. And we're talking major film composers, game audio designers, yeah. post-production supervisors, you know, um, audio engineers, mastering engineers, you know, just all kinds of different personalities in a room. And... The one thing that, that tied them all together was, you know, Cubase software and yeah. just the experience they had with it. Uh, composers, singer, songwriters, just, you know, people love the software. It's just they find it very musical. It's easy to use. And, yeah, they're very passionate about it. Do you compete with DAWs like like you're, you're, you're putting Nuendo up against Pro Tools mm -hmm. up against... I can't, actually, well, I can't think of many other ones now. Like, there's, there's the market is shrinking in terms of very, very powerful DAWs, uh, and, and in the same way that it's shrinking in very powerful like console manufacturers. Mm -hmm. You know, ten years ago there were twenty console manufacturers, and now we're down to maybe ten. You know, huge console manufacturers. So, so does 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 something like 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 Nuendo uh, and and the updates that happen to Nuendo uh, guarantee its future success? Like, what are what are they doing to guarantee that it that it stays current with the immersive mixes, with the uh, the, the new techniques of audio engineering? Well, uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned Nuendo because Nuendo Nuendo has actually been the pioneer in a lot of things. Um, VR audio is one. Uh, we were the first uh, DAW to actually have plug-in support available for a lot of the VR uh, components. Uh, a lot of video game manufacturers manufacturers actually use Nuendo uh, for a lot of their scoring because the implementation is, uh, the, wise, the WISE implementation is already built in. Yep. Uh, it's not a separate thing you have to buy. It's not a plug-in. Yeah, it's just it, everything is, is, is integrated within. So one of the other things that I've noticed about Steinberg in, as well is that they, are, they listen a lot to their consumers. Look at these guys. So we got uh, Dave Meisner from uh, HHB and we got uh, Richard Chickie here. Man, we got a crashing party. You, you, Hi, can, you can crash parties anytime. Good to see you. Hey. Be around for a bit? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Totally Very, it's all right. This is live television. This is what it's all about. So yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I, I do believe that Nuendo is a huge yeah. innovator in all of these things, yeah. and and that's well, that's a big deal. One of the things that I do know is you know because I, I get a lot of the feedback from um, from end users, and you know we have an open channel with the developers. We send the, the feedback on a daily basis, yeah. and the thing I like about it is they actually give you feedback right away and go, oh. Can we hear more about that? Or yeah. how many customers are asking? And well, that's a neat feature. And then usually in the next update or the next revision, you might see one or two of those features start to yeah. pop up. So, um, you know, they're they're really good at at seeing 
you know, they've got development plans already in place for the next couple of years about what the new features are going to be with regards to the changes in the industry and sort of what's, what are the new protocols people are looking for, what's the new plugin implementation, are there new yeah. formats, are there new codecs. Um, and it's, it's nice to, to work for a company that, you know, listens to its, to its end users and tries to make things, you know, what their customers want. So, so a, a big trend that's happening is uh, software licensing on a, a perpetual basis. Mm -hmm. uh, is Nuendo Steinberg uh, are users to expect that, or is that an unknown unknown when it comes to the, well, the future of companies? W without saying too much, I mean, you know, Steinberg has always got their their finger on the pulse of what's happening. Um, it's very interesting because they were one of the first companies that actually went to uh, an authorization tool. Um, which was great because it really did cut down on the pirated software and everything else. Right. But it does cause a bit of an issue when it comes to trials and a few other things. So they're fully aware of that. They're moving towards something new. Um, and with the video game industry especially, a lot of things are project-based. So they are looking more license compatibility. Right. Uh, I've spoken with a number of them over the, over the last year or so. Um, so it's definitely something that I think is in the plans. Um, and it's something that they're working on. But... That, you know, Steinberg is a company that they won't do anything unless they know they can do it the Absolutely. right way. Absolutely. Same so, with Yamaha. Yeah. They're, they're it's, very, it's, it's very, very I mean, cautious, very you know precise. What? Yeah, it might take an extra six months to, to get there, but when they get there, they know it's going to be reliable and they know it's going to be what everybody wants. Fantastic, so. Chris. It has been a pleasure to chat with you. It's really interesting to see from a, from a point of view of a corporation like Yamaha mm -hmm. what the audio industry is. And uh, it's a very unique point of view, and I really appreciate you sharing it with us today. And, Absolutely. Uh, I look forward to chatting with you on the floor. And uh, speaking of the floor, we're going to go back to the floor and take a look at some, uh, some views from the floor, and uh, we'll be back with another guest. Okay.